So I'm reading from the from the Bavli Masachas Savarzara. Unclus Bar Clonimus Igaya. During the during the generation before the destruction of the Beis Hamikdash, there was a a a, a, a Roman a Roman aristocrat who decided to 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 convert to Torah. His name was Unclus Bar Clonimus. So Shadar Kesar Gunda de Romaya Basre. So some Roman official, either the Caesar himself or some other high-ranking Roman official in the area who was his relative, sent after a gdud, a, a, a whole contingent of soldiers uh, after him. Moshchayu uh, Bekra. And when they caught up with Unclus, they, they told him, listen, you know, uh, uh, you know, the Caesar sent us uh, after you, you have to come back, you have to give, you have to give up this whole uh, crazy Jewish thing. And so he started having a conversation with them, and by the time they were done, they had converted. The Gdud, all the soldiers converted. So Caesar sent another group of soldiers. And this time Caesar told him, don't, don't speak with him at all. Just grab him and bring him back. Okay, fine. So... Me, me, knock at Nura Makami Inche. So, 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 Uncle said to the Gdud, he said, Listen, when the high officials, when the king is like walking around, who walks before who with the torch in order to make light, in order to like light the way? So they said, I'm Rulay, I'm Rulay, who, right? The, the, right, the, the lower level officials, right? The Evid, the servant, he's going to walk in front of the high official and he's going to hold the torch in front of us. He said that's very interesting because by us it works the opposite way. God walks in front of us with the light. As it says in the Pasuk in Shemos that God walked before them with the right with the Amur Eish in order to light up the way in the Midbar. Igayor. They all converted on the spots because of that horror. Like wow, unbelievable. <laughs> So Caesar sent another another group of soldiers after him. Don't delay at all. Don't speak to him. Don't delay. Don't let him say anything. Just grab him. So they went. They grabbed him. They they didn't make him... They didn't allow him to say anything. <coughs> so he, they, they, they saw, or he saw, the, a, a mezuzah that was placed on the door. Osiv Yedei Allah. He puts his hand on it. Unklus, he puts his hand on the mezuzah as he's walking out. Bamar lehu, my high. Big mistake. The soldiers asked him, what are you doing? What are you doing? My high. Amar lehi. Amalon at, amar lehu, min hagashol olam. It is the normal manner of things. Melech basav adam, yoshev mi bifnim. That the king sits inside. Va'avadav misham remosa b'chutz. And his servants guard him from outside. Ve'ilu ha'kadosh baruch hu, avadav mi bifnim. God doesn't work that way. His servants are inside. As it says, Hashem As it says in the Pasuk in Tehillim, that God will guard you, your comings and your goings, forever. Igoyer. They all converted. To Lo Shadar Basre. And he decided, not worth it. My whole army is going to become Jewish now. I'm not going to send any more uh, people after. <coughs> We find in the in the encounter between Yaakov and Yosef after so many years of being apart, the very very famous formulation that really forms the basis for all blessings that are given from father to son in the Jewish people. And, uh, and Yaakov uh, summons Yosef um, uh, before him, and Yosef brings his, uh, his two children with him. At the Pshat level, it's worth, 
it's worth pointing out some 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 points at the pshat because it's uh, it's just worth understanding even though this isn't necessarily connected to the flow of our conversation. This section from pasuk. From Perak Memches, Pasuk, uh, let's say Pasuk, Pasuk, Pasuk Gimel, is actually a throwback to Parshas Vayigash. This is one of the examples in the Torah where a section f- is intentionally put out of place in order to tell us something about something that's, that's happening later on. One example, which is clear just from the reading it, is we're going to have in a few weeks from now uh, in Parshas, in Parshas Beshalach. Where Moshe tells where Moshe tells Aaron to take from the mun and put it as a mishmeres in the Kodesh Hakadoshim, even though at the time there was no Kodesh Hakadoshim. Right? There was a it's in Senes Haman that was put in the Kodesh Hakadoshim. An allusion to this is that at that very point, it tells you that the Jewish people eat the mun for forty years. It already tells you now that there's going to be a forty-year sojourn in the midbar. So it's like this little par- it's like this little parenthesis in the middle of the narrative that tells you there's gonna this, 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 there's something's gonna happen in the future that 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 this month is gonna have to be like a land some, some some type of important remembrance and it's gonna be a central feature in the whole story which is gonna last for four decades. It's like it's, it's just a it's just a parenthesis. So there are many examples of this and this is one such example. How do we know that this is in fact a parenthesis? Because as it says, Vayetse Yosef Osam Ni'in Bir Kav, that Yosef takes his sons off of his lap. Now, how, when does Parshas Vayichi take place? Vayichi Yaakov Beres Mitzrayim, Shva Shana, 17 years after he shows up in Mitzrayim. How old were Menashe and Ephraim at that, at that, at that, at that time? Okay. They were at least in their early 20s. How do we know? Because Yosef gives birth to Ephraim and Menashe before the famine starts. That's what we learn in Parshas Miketz, before the famine starts. So that means that they're nine years old when they show up, because it's two years into the famine. So, right, the seven years of, the seven years of, pl- excuse me, excuse me, scratch that. They're born before the fa- at some point before the famine, right? So at the very, at the very minimum, they're 19 years old, right? Even if they were born at the very, very end of the years of plenty, that's at least two years plus the 17 years, so they're 19. So if they're two 19-year-old kids, okay, they're not sitting on Yosef's lap that he's going to remove them and place them before his father, right? Rather, what is in fact going on? This is a, again, this is a throwback to the very first encounter that Yosef and Yaakov have when they first meet, when they first meet. And that's why Yaakov says, Miela, who are these? It's not because he doesn't know who they are, that he's he spent the past, you know, two decades with them and he's like, he's having trouble seeing and identifying them. No, he's like, he's never seen them before. This is the first time he's seeing them. He says, Who are these two kids with you? And he says, These are these are the these are the children that God has blessed me with in this place. So Yaakov says, Bring them, bring them here so I can bless them. This blessing is happening at that at that at that time in the story. This is worth highlighting. And what is the formulation of this blessing? Yaakov blesses Yosef saying, God, that my fathers walked before them, Avraham Yitzchak, the angel that has redeemed me from all evil, should bless these children. And my name should be called upon them, v'shem avusai, as well as the name of my fathers, Avram Yitzchak, v'yid gularov bekerav ha'aretz, and they should be numerous and 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 multiply as fish amongst the land. You know, we look back at the whole progression of the Yaakov story. The theme of Malachim plays a very very powerful role. When Yaakov starts off his journey, he sees the vision of the ladder with the Malache Elohim Olim biyordimba. When he return, when he's in, when he's in Padan Aram, when he's by Lavan, he sees a vision of angels orchestrating the sheep that the sheep will produce the type of sheep that he had gambled upon that those types of that this particular type of sheep will be his salary for all the years working for Lavan. When he comes back to Eretz Yisrael, he meets Vayif Geubo Malachi Elohim. The angels come to greet him again. He was Vayif Gaba Makom when he first goes out in Parshas Vayetze, and now Vayif Ge'ubo, Malachi Elohim. 
And as Chazal, right, this is why Chazal are commenting that this mysterious Ish that he battles in Parshas Vayishlach is really a Malach. It's really a Malach. And he's saying, you know, send me away, right? Kiba Shachar, because the morning is coming. It's my turn to go and sing Shira. It's all like the Malachim are constantly popping up in the Yaakov story. There's all these Malachim that are coming and popping up. And now when Yaakov is, is handing the baton over to the next generation <clears throat> and he's connecting the link between his generation and the two generations below him, he's also recalling this malach. He's also recalling a malach that's going to, just like these malachim guarded him, so too the malachim should be able to pass on and guard the next generation. I want to delve into a little bit <laughs> what this idea means practically. Practically, practically, Lamaisa, what these what these ideas mean. We quoted this story from the Gemara in Avodah Zarah, <coughs> which is a which is a very very well known story about the nature of the mitzvah, the nature of the mitzvah of mezuzah. You know, Rashi in uh, the Gemara in Psachim, and Davvav, if I'm not mistaken. Where's Tapor? You could confirm this. In the Gemara, in, in, in the first sugya in Psachim about uh, who has achrayos to do the bedikas chametz, yeah, the socher or the maskir, the socher, dalit. Okay, I thought it was zayin. Fine, dalit. The socher or the maskir. So the Gemara says that it's muhach, right? So, so, right, so there's a discussion there. Who ha, who has to do bedikas chametz? And the Gemara asks, okay, so so that's the din for bedikas chametz, and who has the din, who has the obligation for mezuzah? That's the, so, so the Gemara says the Dover Pasha that the Socher has to do it. The Socher, the one who rents it and who's living in it. Says Rashi, how do we know it's the Dover Pasha? Because the Socher is living there and he's the one who needs to be guarded. The Maskir isn't living there. He doesn't need to be guarded. <laughs> he's just renting it out. So it's the Dover Pasha that the Socher, that the Socher has to do it because he's the one that needs the guarding. <laughs> Let me take a quick interlude. Before we delve into that, before we delve into that, I want to take a, I want to take a quick interlude. The Rambam and Hilchus Tshuva. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to take the interlude. I'm going to continue with what I'm going to continue with what I was saying. <laughs> I apologize. This source that we see in the Gemara of is not the it's not the only source. It's not the only source to indicate this. There are many, many sources in Chazal that indicate very, very strongly that there's this attribute of guardian of guarding by the mezuzah. In the Babli and Menachos and Daflama Gimel, Amud Beis, Amar Rava Mitzvah La Anicha Betefach Hasamuch L'Rishus Harabim. If a person has a very wide door frame, okay, it's a mitzvah to put the mezuzah in the tefach closest to Rishus Harabim as opposed to inward. Toward, toward, toward the inside of the house. It says the Gemara, my time, Rabbanon Amri Kadeshi, if Gab Mezuzah, Miyad. Immediately when you walk in, you should hit the Mezuzah immediately. You shouldn't have to like walk through the causeway in order to get to it. Rav Hanina, and, and Rav Hanina says, Kihechi Dinatarie, in order so that it should guard him. The Tintre, excuse me, that it should guard him. Amri Hanina, Bo Re, Shalokuminas Hakarish Borchu, Minas Basar Vadam. That the way that Akarosh Baruch Hu conducts himself is not the same way that flesh and blood conducts themselves. The king sits inside, the and, and the nation guards him from outside. His servants are inside. That sounds familiar. This is this, this is just another version of the story of Uncle Sager. In the Yerushalmi, the Yerushalmi in Maseches Peya. The very, very first sugi of Masachas Peya tells a very, very interesting story of Rabbi Yudah Nasi, who had a who had a relationship with uh, with um, with uh, Shvor Malka, and Shvor Malka they have a very, very close relationship, and they exchange gifts. And Shvor Malka sends one day to, to Rabbi Yudah Nasi a very precious gem. He sends him a precious gem, and what does Rabbi Yudah Nasi send him back? He sends him back a mezuzah. And the Shvor Malka is a little insulted. He says, listen, I sent, you a, I sent you a nice present. You sent me like, you know, a piece of parchment. Like, what's going on? So Rebbe says, I <coughs> sent you something. You, excuse me, you sent me something that I have to guard. I have to guard this precious jewel. 
I'm sending you something that's going to guard you. It's going to guard you. And we see that this idea, to highlight this again, this is not just a nice idea. This, this is, this is lahalacha. We see nafkamin is lahalacha. That the socher is the one who has to take the mezuzah because it's because he's the one that needs guarding. And as the Gemara Menachos over here says that you have to place the mezuzah closer to, as close to the outside of the, outside of the building as possible so that it can guard you. See, this is a very, very powerful idea. Interestingly, the Rambam <coughs> in Hilchus Mezuzah, the Rambam Hilchus Mezuzah in Perak Hey Halacha Dawid. Minog Pashut, it is the standard Minog. Shakosfin al Mezuzah Mibachutz Kenegar Rivuach Shibin Parsha the Parsha Shem Shakai. That on the outside of the parchment, meaning not on the place where the two parshas of Kriyashma are, but rather on the outside, you write the name Shin Dalad Yud. The Ein Bazehef said Lefi Shuhumi Bachutz. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't hurt anything, it doesn't damage the, the kashos of the mezuzah because it's on the outside. Aval Eilu Shakosun Rav Mimifnim, Shemos Malachim, O Shemos Kedoshin, people who write inside the mezuzah the names of angels, O Pasuk O Chosmos, or other verses from the Torah. Quoting from the Gemara and Sanhedrin in Perak Chelek, that people that use that people that use Divrei Torah in order to in order to in order to heal themselves or to obtain some other some other type of material benefit, they have no chelak l'maba. She'ela tipshim. These fools lo dailem shebitlu hamitzvah. Not only have they ruined the mitzvah because they invalidate the mezuzah. Not only have they invalidated the mezuzah, mitzvah gedola. This great mitzvah shehi yichud shemo, which is meant to 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 highlight the unity of God, vavodaso, in order to in order to strengthen the love for Him and His divine service, ki atzman. That it's an amulet for their own sake. alibam hasachal. This was these ideas were produced by their foolish hearts. Shazed davar hamahana bahavle haolam. Behavle haolam, the vanities of the world. People that are consumed with the vanities of the world, this is the type of thing that they think of. Now, the mezuzah is only there in order to be a magic amulet to, to, to guard you. And these people, they have no chelak of Allah and they haven't been Mekai in the mitzvah. So, what does the Rambam do with all, with, all, with, all these, with all these quotes from Chazal that we've seen in the Bavli and in the Yushalmi that seem to very, very strongly indicate, no, in Achadami, the, the mezuzah is there in order to guard you. Mitzvah is there in order to guard you. Yeah. The Rambam also has an interesting lashon. Like the Rambam, if he talks also elsewhere, I think this is I'm not mistaken, also talks so, about how like the people see the mezuzah and they'll forget about the heavenly asma. Uh, so, uh, so we're gonna get there. You're jumping ahead. Very good. We're gonna get. We're gonna get there. I promise. We're gonna get there. So to understand what exactly is what exactly is going on, what is the nature of this shmira, and how does it work, and what exactly is going on. So before we get to the halacha. That Noam just referenced. There's another halacha. In Hilchos Tshuva, Paragimel, halacha that everyone knows. Avol bishet ki ashova b'rosh hashana gezeres hakosuf. Remez yeshbo. Even though the mitzvah to sound the shofar is a divine decree, there is a hint contained within this mitzvah. Kelomar, and his meaning to say, Uru yeshenim yeshenaschem, awaken. The, you, you, those who are sleeping from their sleep, and those who are slumbering away, arise and examine your ways and atone. These are the ones who forget, who forget the truth in the vanities, the vanities of time. And they waste all of their years in vanities. The hevel. Again, the hevel. Asher lo yo'ilu v'loyatsil. And habitu l'nach shosechem. And the shofar is calling out, examine your souls. Ve'etibu darkechem. And improve your ways. V'yazov kol echad mechem darko hara. And all of you will leave behind all of your, all of your, all of your bad ways. V'mach shavasu asher lo tova. Now very, very often when this, this imagery of the shofar coming and waking people up, is there some, uh, it, it, it's like indicative, it, it kind of, the picture in your head is, you know, just a room of some hedonistic orgy going on and people, and some guy walks into the, walks into the room and says, guys, stop, what's going on? Stop, you're wasting your time. Stop. Right? That's the Havle Asman, right? The Havle Asman is, uh, you know, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. What are you doing? Examine your ways and wake up and all this is bad. Yeah. 
the truth is, the truth is, the truth is, Rabbi Osai, the truth is, Rabbi Osai, is that the Havle Hazman, the Havle Hazman is not, it's not someone being drawn necessarily to something that seems appealing and getting sucked in to that pattern of behavior. In fact, it's much, much darker than that. Much, much darker. Now to go to the halacha that uh, Noam was uh, referencing before. At the very, very end of Hilchos Mezuzah, the very, very end, this is in Perak Zion. No, excuse me, Perak Vav. Perak Vav. Halacha Yud Gimel. Chayev Adam li Zayar b'mezuzah mipnei shehi chovas hakol tamid. A person should make sure that they that they that they guard this mitzvah of mezuzah because it is a it is an obligation that is constant. What does that mean? It's constant, meaning you put it on the house, and it's always there all the time. You never take it off. The whole eish she kanes v'yetsi yifgabi yichud shemo shel hakadosh baruch The person will confront the unity of God. V'yizkor ahavaso. And he will remember God's love, the Aor Mishenaso, and he will awaken from his sleep. He will awaken from his sleep. Vishgiyaso Bahavle Azman, and wasting his time in the vanities of time. The Eida Shein Sham Davar Haomed Laolam Ulu Ome Olamim. There is nothing that has any eternal permanence. Eliyadiyas Tsur Haolamim, the knowledge of the Creator. Umiyad hu choser ladato v'holech bedarke misharim, and immediately he goes. To, he will mend his ways to follow the straight path. Amru chachamim. A chachamim said, "This is a this is a quote from the Gemara in Menachos and Daf Lamed." Kol mi sheyesh lo tefillin berosho bezro. Anyone who has tefillin on his head and in his arm, betzitzis bebigdo, and sitzis on his on his on his beged, a mezuzah bepischa, and a mezuzah on the on the door. <laughs> he can be sure that he will not sin. That's what the Gemara Menachos says. Says the Rambam. What's the explanation of this Gemara? <laughs> because the person has many re- things that are reminding him, reminding him to not sin. <laughs> These are the angels that save him. <laughs> As it says, God will put his angel around you and save you. These are the malachim. When we say that the God will put his angels around you and save you, this is what he's talking about. He's talking about the deeds that a person performs that are orienting himself to the yediyas habore, to the eternal tzor ha'olamim, the only thing that has permanence in, in reality, in existence. The things that orient him to that awareness, those are the malachim that guard him. That guard him. Listen to a section in Moran Nebuchim from Perak Yud Zion, Chelek Gimel of Moran Nebuchim. In Perak Yud Zion, and we're going to segue into Perak Yud, uh, Yud Ches. These are known uh, classically as the Pirkei Hashgacha of the Rambam, where he lays out his understanding of what it means that God has Hashgacha on the Bria. What does that mean that God has a shgacha on the Bria? Hashgacha ha'elokis l'da'ati. This idea of hashgacha ha'elokis, the divine hashgacha, kefi shenir ali nispachas l'shefa ha'eloki, is a direct effect of what I refer to as the shefa ha'eloki. I think we referred to this idea a few times. The Rambam in Nechelik Beis, Perak Yud Beis of Moran Avuchim, has his famous line of Hashefa Eloki, he Shefa Tmidis Meis Habore. God, the Shefa of Akarosh Baruch Hu, the outpouring, like just imagine like this imagery of a waterfall that's constantly pouring. It's Shefa Tmidis, it's constant, it's constantly pouring, it's constantly pouring out. And the question is not, is it there? The question is, are, is a person able to receive it? That's the question. It's a Shefa Tmidis. So says the Rambam, the idea of the Hashgacha of Akarosh Baruch Hu is directly connected to this idea of the Shefa. It's constantly always there. And says the Rambam, this is why only human beings, and again, this could be possibly open for discussion, it could be the different, we've shown them different opinions about this, the Rambam says that only human beings are subject to this phenomenon of Ashgacha HaElokis. Only human beings. 
not any other uh, living creature in the world, only human beings. Shara Ishe Bale Chaim Are Hamatzav Bahim Kvish Silver Aristo Bli Suffolk. He says it's just like Aristotle observed that they're all um um Excuse me. Everything is complete happenstance with them. It is not divinely ordained with anything that happens to them. Okay? Now I'm segueing into Perak Yudchas. The Hashgacha of HaKadosh Baruch Hu depends on the level of the individual. The level of hashgacha, the amount of hashgacha, is dependent upon how much is appropriate for that person's level. He's boning. How strong God's hashgacha was bound up to the avos in everything that they were doing. Even in their mundane matters. And you can see how the Pasuk makes explicit that God's Hashgacha is attached to even the mundane matters of the Avos. As it says, To Avram Anuchi Mogain Lach, I will guard you. And continues the Rabbim, This has nothing to do with their physical strength or their or their. Um, their their preordained natural faculties, as the pasuk says that that man will not be strengthened only with physical strength alone. It is all dependent on the person's wholeness or his brokenness. Klomar meaning to the extent that they are connected to the Creator. The closer someone is. To the Creator, they are cons- they are they are ensconced within protection. Raglei Chasidav Yishmor, as the pasuk in Shmuel says, the 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 steps of his Chasidim he will guard. So let's ask a question. According to the Rambam, does the mezuzah guard a person? Yes or no? Yeah. The mezuzah absolutely guards someone. And how does it guard someone? It guards someone because when you hit the mezuzah when you walk into the room, v'yachshov biyichudo yisale. The unity of God and that He's the only eternal thing, and you commit yourself to the love and to the divine service of the divine. Right? That puts you into the Ashgacha. That's the thing that puts you into the Shmira. So true that what the Rambam writes in Parake that people, oh, people think that this is like a magic amulet. That's also true, because it's not a magic amulet. It's not magic. It doesn't work. You put this on the door and you'll be okay. No, no, no. That's not how it works. It works that when you, a person is Pogea Beyichud Hashem. When he confronts the unity of God and removes himself from the Havle Hazman, from the vanities of time, from the temporal vanities of time, and understands that there is nothing, that there is nothing there other than Bore Ha'olam Shachai Lenetzach Netzachim, that puts him into the Shmir. And those are the Malachim, Chona Hashem Malach, Svibli Rayav. God puts an angel around those who live in awe of him. That's how it works. That's how it works. And this is what Yaakov is praying, blessing his children and grandchildren, that they will also experience this malach. This was the dynamic of the malach that Yaakov Avinu, regardless of what situation he was in, he was running away from his brother in Haran, he was working for his crazy narcissistic uncle in Armenia, he was coming back to Eretz Yisrael to have to confront his crazy brother. Every single situation he was in, he was always running into these malachim. Everything was a malach. Yeah, no name. The Rambam didn't write the Zohar. Where's he getting like the Zohar? What does that have to do with the Zohar? There's no Zohar here. I know. I know. Just round question on on Rambam. Where does he get? How does he reach the conclusions of Mordechai? Is that like his thoughts, or it's like a Masora? Either he had prophecy, or he had, uh, or he had some type of Masora. Or I mean, he claims that this is all analysis, analysis, uh, his own analysis of the Pesukim. That's what he claims. That's what that. That's what he says. And many people that say, listen, the Rambam goes into tremendous detail about the types of prophecy that a person can experience and like the different levels, there are 11 distinct levels and like which psukim in the Torah are referring to which ones and what the Navi sees during which one. Like, how do you know any of that? It's a good question. I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know. You're asking me. I don't know. <laughs> when we say like someone who has like a more intense stone, the sore is like more at the more in a book him or? Uh uh-uh, uh, sorry. Like with someone who has a more intense stone, the sore. Yeah. Would we say like they're they're more right than more in a book him or like? The... This is a very long conversation, but but uh, in terms of in terms of the Ramam's understanding of the Shalshelas Hamasora of um, of what he calls Soda Satora. So the Rambam says that uh, a few times in Moron of in the Hakdama and throughout the throughout the Sefer, he 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 holds that the Masora was largely broken regarding anything Soda Satora. That's what he holds. He says this explicitly. Now what's interesting is is that as the Rambam is writing this in Spain and in Provence and in many other places in the world, not not many, but 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 several that we know about, there are Bate Medrash that are that are that are studying these things. The base medrash of the Rivid. Um, that's like that's just a very, very strong example um, already. I mean uh, the Rev uh, Rev, uh, Rev 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 Sadja Gon, who was slightly before the Rambam, uh, wrote a parish on Sefer Yitzira. As we know, so the, so it's the, how, why why did the Rambam declare definitively that there was no Masora? It could be that he wasn't familiar that there was a Masora. It could be that he thought that there wasn't. He just didn't know about it. It could be. It could very well be that he didn't know. Um, but it is a puzzle. It is a puzzle. Um, but certainly, as the Rambam is writing those words that there's no Masora, there is a Masora. There are several Masoras going on. At least at least one or two, um, and uh, it's. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mystery how to understand that. Of course, there are try there are those that try to claim that the Rambam uh, you know had an awakening at the towards the end of his life that he you know that he uh, that he recognized these things and gave credence to them. But uh, I think that that's very dachok. I don't think that there's any uh, there's any historical historical credence for any of that. Anyway, that's uh, that's beyond the point of our conversation. Just to get back to what we were talking about. In the Sefer Yishayo in Parak Membez, Uh, this is Parak Membez, Paso K. Ko Amar Ha'el Hashem Bore Hashamay Menoteim. Thus says, God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that he gives, uh, that he places the nation on a desolate land and breathes life back into them. I will strengthen your hands with justice. To open the eyes of the blind. And to open up the prison cell for those who are caught, who are, who are, who are trapped. Ani Hashem Shemi. Achariv Harimu Gvaos. I will I will lay waste to the mountains and to the hills. The Samti Naros Liim Agamim Ovish, and I will make all the rivers dry. The Holachti Ivrim Baderach. Those who are blind, I will take on the I will take on the straight path. Asim Machshach Lifneim Laor. And all the darkness before him, I will light up. Meaning, the blind are constantly walking in darkness. I'm going to light it up for them. And those who put their faith into idols, they will they will be they will be in scorn. And those who who look at the statues and declare it God. Those who are deaf, shamo, they will be able to hear. And those who are blind, habitu liros, they will be able to see. Mi iver ki'im avdi, who is blind more than my servant? The cheresh kemalachi eshlach, and those and who is deaf more than the angel that I send? Mi iver kemeshulam, who is more blind than my wholesome beloved one? The iver keevet Hashem, who is more blind than the servant than the servant of God? Raos rabos velo tishmor, I have sent you many things to see. But you did not keep them. Pakoach is nayim. I wanted to open up your ears. Velo yishma, and you didn't hear. You see what's going on over here? There is a crisis going on. There's a crisis that there is these blind, deaf people that God is trying to reach. 
He's trying to reach them. He's trying to lighten up the eyes of the blind. He's trying to open up the ears of the deaf. And they're not listening. Hashem chafetz l'man tzidko. God desires for his righteous ones. Yagdil Torah v'yadir. And therefore, he makes the Torah great before them. He's trying to give them, trying to show them greatness in order to open up their eyes and open up their ears. V'hu am bazuz v'shasui. But rather, but, but, but they're not going with the program. There remained a downtrodden nation. Hafeach bachurim kulam. All of their strong men, their bachurim, are hafeach. And says Rashi, like pachei nefesh. They are downtrodden of the soul. Meaning the ones who are supposed to be the ones most imbued with the vitality, like the young men, are completely sapped of all strength. Ubabate klaim hachbo, and they are trapped. They're in prison. They're in prison. So you see these 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 three descriptions running through the whole right. The blind, deaf, Im, deaf, imprisoned. They're blind and they're deaf and they're in prison. And God is desperately trying to open their eyes, open their ears, and take them out of prison. But they're not coming along. They're not going with the program. The ain matzil. There's no one to save them. Mi bochem yazin calls out the navi. Who amongst you will listen? And listen to what I have to say. <clears throat> this is now the beginning of Perak Mem Gimel. Thus says God, the, your creator, Yaakov. Do not fear. I will redeem you. We see... <clears throat> <laughs> in this section of the Navi, that there is a crisis going on. The crisis is, is that the people are all, they're acting like blind, deaf, and imprisoned people. Someone who's blind, deaf, and imprisoned, <clears throat> he doesn't want to see anything that's shown to him, he doesn't want to listen to anything that's given to him, and he's not able to leave the current paradigm that he's in. That's what it means to be imprisoned. And the solution to this, the solution to this is to be God is trying to deliver to them the awesomeness of his teachings in order to heal their blindness, heal their deafness, and take them out of prison. And as the Pasuk ends off, we actually skipped this Pasuk, excuse me. Despite God's best efforts, no one is putting it on their hearts. No one is taking these messages to heart. This rabosai is what it is what it is what it looks like is what it really looks like. Elu hashogim bahavle hazman. I'm sorry for my crass description before, but I think that I think that there's a, I think I think there's a very very powerful point over here. People think that the havle hazman is people running after things that seem shiny and attractive in the moment, and they're having a great time. And you need to convince them that really you're not having a good time. Really, you're not having a good time, and I'm gonna show. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna belittle and besmirch everything that you're doing, and I'm gonna convince you to right to turn around. That's not how it looks. That's never how it looks. Elu hashogim bahavle hazman are people that are pache nefesh, as the Navi says. They are downtrodden of spirit. That's what it looks like. The people that are that identify with the havle hazman, with the vanities of the world, the things that have no permanence whatsoever. The people that identify with that, they're completely, completely sapped of their vitality. And yes, it could be maybe interspersed with you know some pockets of fun here and there. But all that's doing, all that is, is a distraction for their essential pache nefesh, for their complete depression and sapped of vitality and no will to live. That's what it looks like. That's what it really looks like. And God is coming to these blind, deaf, imprisoned people. That does not sound like they're having a good time. They're blind, deaf, and imprisoned. He's coming to these people and saying, listen, I'm trying to get you out. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you out of your Havle Azman. I'm trying to get you out. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to do to get out. He's sending his Malachim to get them out. And no one's interested because they can't, they, they can't think of being outside of the current, the current paradigm. This is the Sod Rabosai of the Mishnah that we all know at the very end of Masechus Machos. Right? He wants to help you. He wants to help you. That's why he gave you all these mitzvot. People read that, they're like, it's, it's, 
it's like a game, you know, we're ta like we're making all these different things that you can get a payout for because he wants to give you a payout. That's not what it is. God wants to save you from the Havle Hazman. He wants to save you from being a Bachor Pach Nafesh. Of having your vitality sapped from you. And that's why he gave you all that's and as the Rambam famously says in his parish on Mishnah Sham, his parish right, that person does one mitzvah, one mitzvah with the proper kavana lishma, completely for its own sake. Perush, what does that mean for its own sake? As the Rambam himself says at the end of Hilchas Mezuzah, like we just said, right? Yidiyas habore va'avaso v'yichudo l'chayi netzach netzachim. For the unity of God, for the love of God, and for the eternality of the divine. Someone who does a mitzvah for that, for that purpose, at that moment, he enters olam haba. At that moment, he can transcend the constricted consciousness of this world. And that's why la hagdil Torah la hadira is in order to in order to save us from this. And this is what Yaakov. This is the malach, the malach, that Yaakov is blessing his children and his grandchildren with. We're getting to Unklus now, okay? Noam has already heard Unklus. Some, maybe some other people have heard Unklus. We're gonna read Unklus again. Where did Unklus go? The final pasuk of this blessing. That they will be numerous like fish in the land. So the simple understanding of this verse is that Yaakov is blessing them that they will be fruitful and multiply because fish have a lot of kids. So so too, you should also be fruitful and multiply and have a lot of children. But Unklus, Unklus on this Pasuk says something very interesting. Let's read Unklus and see if you can identify. Unklus adds three words to this Pasuk. Three words. Gosh, there's a lot of page Rashi over here. Excuse me. Uncle says the following: Malacha di parak yasi mi kol bisha, the angel that redeemed me from all evil, yivarech yas ulamaya. He will bless these lads, v'yiskrei b'hon shemi, and his and my name will be called upon them, v'shuma avasai, and the name of my fathers, Avraham v'yitzchak, uchenune yama, and like fish of the sea. Yisgun bego b'nei they will grow and be multi and will multiply amongst people al ara on the land. What are the three words that Unklas added there? That was a lot. That wasn't really fair. Let's just focus. On, let's focus. Let's focus. Let's focus on the last. Let's focus on the last sentence. The yiskei b'hon shuni b'shum was not okay. Uchenune yama yisgun and like fish of the sea, they will multiply bego b'nei al ara amongst people on the land. Which words were added there? Yama. Yama. Yama is one. Sea amongst people. The blessing that Yaakov is giving is to contrast Nuneyama Bego Ara, Vidgularov Baaretz. Fish don't live on the on the land. Fish live in the sea. Right? Fish only live in the sea. That's where they can be, that's where they could be fruitful and multiply. But you're not going to be in the sea. You're going to be on the land. You're not going to be in the ideal environment to be fruitful and multiply. You're going to be in a hostile environment. And despite the fact that you're going to be a hostile environment, you can multiply just like, like fish on the land. Like fish on the land. That's what you can be. That's what the that's what the malach will allow you to be. It will allow you to, to, to function in this environment that's trying to sap your vitality, blind you, make you a deaf mute, and put you in jail. <laughs> And in that environment, you will be you will be able to thrive. Not only will you survive, but you can thrive. The Yid Gularov. The Yid Gularov. The final Ha'ara. The final, final Ha'ara. This whole formulation that we that we that we that we read over here. Really, it's just one pasa. Kamalacha goel Ra. Okay. Who is this a blessing for? Yaakov is giving this blessing to who? Who is he giving the blessing to? Ephraim and Menasha, right? The Pasuk opens up. Vayivarech es Yosef vayomar. He blesses Yosef saying the following. Hamalacha goel osimi kora da 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 da. And then to make things even more confusing, it does actually say, Yivarech es hamnearim. He should bless the lads, refer, clearly referring to, to a fireman <coughs> to a fireman in Menashe. So who's the blessing to? Who's the blessing to? But, but it's, uh, okay, you could, I mean, you could kind of say that it's all of them, but I mean, Clearly, 
the actual formula, like the actual pasuk, the main pasuk, to be fair, the main pasuk of Hamalacha Goelasi is in the plural. It's all in the plural. So clearly he's referring to the Na'arim, the two lads in front of him. And yet, the introductory pasuk says, So how do we make sense of this? And Bosai, what does Yaakov introduce this blessing with, even before he starts the actual blessing? He says, <laughs> that Ephraim and Menashe are going to have special status. Despite the fact that they're not my children, they're my grandchildren, they're going to be like Shimon and Reuven. Meaning they're going to be like my children. And indeed, we see that Ephraim and Menashe are Shvatim. They're their own Shvatim. There's no Shevet Yosef, there's Ephraim and Menashe. If Ephraim and Menashe are Shvatim, what does that make Yosef? It makes Yosef one of the Avos. And that's the blessing of Yosef. The blessing, meaning it's true, the actual content of the blessing is focused on who? Ephraim and Menashe. But Derech Agav, <laughs> to use the halachic jargon, okay, the fact that Ephraim and Menashe are receiving this blessing has implications for Yosef. And those implications are Yosef is now an Av, which we see Beferish explicit in the Pasuk by Yosef, Misham Ro'e Even Yisrael. There he will shepherd the rock of Israel. Says Unklus. Unklus again, coming to save the day. Misham Ro'e Av Ubenin. Even. Think about how you spell Even. Just visualize it in your head for a second. Aleph Bez. And Ben is spelled Bez Nun. If you merge those two words together, what does it spell? Av Aleph Bez. Ben Bez Nun. You merge those two words together, what does it spell? Even. Even means Av and Ben. Yosef is an Av and a Ben together. He's an Av and a Ben. Which is what Yosef is. Yosef is an Av. Yosef plays this unique role that he's the Mashbir, he's the sustainer. Not just for not just for his family, but for the whole world. But he's also a son. He's also a son. Not to get too into detail about Yosef's role and his position in the whole pantheon of characters that we have, but just to highlight on this, on this, on this one Nakuda, that Yosef is an Av and a Ben at the same time. The last prophecy that the Jewish people ever received was by a man named who? Malachi. There you go. And what is Malachi about? All about Malachim. It's all about Malachim. That's why it's called Malachi. Almost certain it wasn't his name. It wasn't his actual name. In fact, Chazal say it wasn't his name. But the content of the Sefer is all about Malachim. The Malach Habris. Hinini Sholeach Malachi Lefanecha. I'm sending my angel before you. My angel before you. And we're constantly having reference, this is in Barry Gimel, by the way, is that we're constantly having reference to these Malachim throughout the Sefer. And we don't know who this Malach is. We don't know who the Malach is. And in the very, very end, we find out who the Malach is. Who's the Malach? Elio. Before the great day of salvation, he's going to be the one to come and tell you all the days here. And what is he going to do? What is he going to do as the prerequisite to make sure that the Gula could come? He will connect the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. He will allow that reconciliation to happen. And Yosef, Yosef is that chibor. Yosef is that connector. The connector between the generation of the fathers and the generation of the sons. He is that connector. And by being that segue, by being that intermediary, that is what allows the geula to come. I'll say one more makor, which I just thought of at the top of my head. And I apologize, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, think of this before. The Ramban, <laughs> last week we quoted the Melchama Sashem. Excuse me, last week we quoted the Balam Or, which was written by Rezachia Levi when he was 19, which prompted the writing of which sefer by the Ramban? The Melchama Sashem. So the Melchama Sashem, it's a good thing that the Balam Or prompted the Ramban, or else he wouldn't have all the crazy chidushim in the Balam Or, in the, in the Melchamos. So the, so the Ramban writes the following in Melchama Sashem. Daf Mem Ches of Dape Harif, he says the following. <coughs> 
the Gemara talks about in the very, very end of the Gemara in Brachos, about the Bracha called Chacham HaRazim, which from this window is probably the most likely spot where you'll ever be able to make that Bracha, because this is the spot where 600,000 Jews tend to gather. A person merits to see 600,000 Jews in one spot, he makes the blessing Chacham HaRazim, the one who is the wise, wise one of all the secrets. And says the Gemara, says the Gemara, that none of the external features of human beings are similar to them. We know that people, you know, even people, you know, the, the fingerprints of identical twins aren't even the same, right? The physical features are not are not the same. The Deo Sam Shavos, and so too their their emotional and internal world are not the same. But you know all of them. You, God, know all of them. Chacham Harazim, the knower of secrets, the knower of secrets. Says the Ramban in unbelievable Chiddush Bamakom. Again, this is on Daf Memches of the of the of the Muhammad of the Dap area from Muhammad Sasha. Right? Masur Hubi Adenu, it is known to us in Masora. Sharoi Lavarech Brochazu Al Odam Echad Mi Israel Hakolo Kolachmas. It's possible, in theory, that there could be one person, one individual person, that that you could make this blessing on. If he was able to encompass all right, the full gamut of wisdom, you'd be able to make this blessing on them. The Alzene Emar, and then this is what the Pasuk in Bamidbar says regarding Yoshua ben Nun, Ish Asher Ruach Bo, the man who the spirit is in him. And say Chazal, Asher Yelech Lefi Rucho shall call Echad the Echad, that he has the capacity to orient himself to the spirit of every individual person. And this was the unique capacity of Yoshua ben Nun, who comes from which Shevet, Rav Osai? From Ephraim. The progeny of Yosef, the progeny of Yosef HaTzadik, is the Isha Sher Ruach Bo. This was the quality of Yosef HaTzadik. Yosef a quality, Yosef, and, and by the way, when, Chaz, when, when the Chachmei Anistar talk about how Yosef is oriented towards this attribute, right? the last attribute of the Six minor attributes within the within the pantheon of the spheros, known as Yisod, colloquially known as Yisod. That's what this means. That's what this means. As the Zohar calls Yisod Klolius, it is the is the it is the it is the encompassing of all of the specificities under one roof. It is everything together. It is the ability to bring together everything under one roof. And Yosef is this capacity. He is the lefi rucho shel kol echad ve'echad. He is the one that is able to orient himself to the spirit of everyone. And this force being brought into the world of the reconciliation, the reconciliation of the av with the ben, with the ben being able to receive from the av and the av being able to receive from the ben and vice versa, right? This capacity is the prerequisite to entering the geula. And it's all done through the possibility to receive Shmira from the Malach, the guardianship of the Malach, the Malachim that we create, Rabosai. We create them. I'm sorry, I forgot one more. And this was actually on the list, so I so I better say it. The final parak of Morinavuchim. The final parak of Morinavuchim. The Rambam quotes the Pasuk from Yirmiyo. Al Yishalel Ha Ashir Ba Ashro, Al Yishalel Ha Kachem Bachmaso, the Al Yishal Ha Gibur Bagvuraso. The wise man should not praise himself for his wisdom. The strong person should not praise himself for his strength, and the rich person should not strain, uh, praise himself for his for his riches. Rather, this is what you should praise yourself with. You want to praise yourself for something? This is what you should praise yourself with. Haskel viadoa osi, haskel viadoa osi. Those who know me, ki ani Hashem, because I am God. Osechesed utstaka. Because I am God who does charity and kindness and justice in the land. Because these I desire. Hashem, thus says the Lord. Says the Rambam. Right? Says the Rambam. Pay attention to the final words of this Pasuk. Because it, it doesn't say, Period. It says, In the land. In the land. It's not enough for the person to just know about God intellectually, that God is the one who does kindness, God is the one who does justice, God is the one who wants this attribute or that attribute. No, no, no. To know God, haskel v'yadoa osi, is when a person does mishpat utzdaka ba'aretz, ba'aretz, when you're able to apply it, when you're able to apply it in the land, when you're able to actualize it. Actualizing it brings about the malach, 
It brings about the malach. The malach are the mitzvos. They are the mitzvos. And through that, the yidgula rov, the kerev ha'aretz. Ha'aretz daika. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.